following show is a paid program. How you doing today? I am so excited. I have a great friend of mine that you will be hearing a lot of information about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Dr. Jenny Bennett is with us on today. She's Executive Director of Reconstruction of a Survivor. Hey, lady, how you doing? I'm doing fabulous, Cam. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. I am so excited today. We talked on yesterday a little bit, but I just could not sleep this morning. I kept thinking to myself, what all information we will be telling young ladies on today and letting them know uh, that it's not a death sentence. So many uh, women think that it's a death sentence and it's gotten so much better. You yourself are a 24 year survivor. Yes, 24 uh, years. Take 24 us, years ago this month, I had surgery. Absolutely. Take us to that day of when they told you and when you found out your story. Uh, when On the day that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, a good friend of mine that I grew up with, um, he, he really, he was a general surgeon, and Don Roby said, uh, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is he'd done a biopsy. The good news is I didn't take much breast. I said, well, I ain't got much breast to take. And he didn't laugh. I thought, what is wrong with Don today? And then he said, the bad news is it's breast cancer. And I just knew I was going to die. I thought, who's going to raise my daughter? Uh, he said, but I can't help you. I'm going to send you to MD Anderson. And the rest is history. I had surgery. Um, I almost died. I could have died after surgery mm -hmm. uh, because a blood clot formed in the reconstructed breast. Mm. But God had a better plan for me. Right, right. 24 years later, you have been working tirelessly on in this organization. How did this organization start? The name and everything. How did you come about it? And how did you decide, hey, you're going to dedicate your life to do this? Well, the organization started back in 2007. And I'd heard God spoke through others to me to say, you need to start a nonprofit. And I thought, I don't have time. I'm busy speaking in, about mathematics all over the United States. I'm busy writing mathematics textbooks. I don't have time. And I heard, well, the second time I heard it, you need to start a nonprofit for breast cancer patients. I thought, uh oh, God's speaking to me. Uh -huh. So what I did was I filed for 501c3, got it funded, and I said, well, okay, now that this is done, now what? Everyone's doing mammograms, so what can I do? And again, I heard, the Holy Spirit speak and say, breast cancer support groups, write the curriculum. You've written curriculum for the state of Texas, the state of Louisiana for mathematics. You've written math textbooks. You can do this. So I got clear directions on how to write the curriculum. We have about 30 sessions in our curriculum right now. Um, and it's curriculum focused with trained facilitators. So I said, I can't go all over the places because we have uh, 11 different locations. And with having trained facilitators who actually conduct the sessions, that is a big help. Right now, we're doing all meetings on Zoom because of the uh, COVID virus. Mm -hmm. And so it's going well. Let's give a few facts. Let's look at a few facts about breast cancer so we can give that information sure. to women. Women sure. and men. Let's make sure of that. Absolutely. Women and Absolutely. men. Let's, let's go down and your list. Let's go. Sure. You, you go down your list and tell us some of the statistics, some of the, <laughs> some of the things. One in eight women, one in eight in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer during a lifetime. Wow. More African-American women are diagnosed with late stage breast cancer and die from um, breast cancer than any other ethnic group. Mm. Let me give you an example. There's a 29 year old who I know who was um, I became acquainted with who was diagnosed she said, I saw the lump, felt the lump, but it kept growing. I just ignored it, thought it would go away. 
And when she was diagnosed, she was stage three. There are only four stages in breast cancer or mm. any cancer. 1% mm -hmm. of men are diagnosed with breast cancer. 1%. You don't have to have a family history in order to be diagnosed with breast cancer. It's not only considered on your mother's side, but please consider your father's side. No one on my mother's side had any type of cancer. My father's side had, uh, his sister had breast cancer. So that's the side where the breast cancer comes from. And then if you notice a lump, that's okay. But know that there are other signs of having breast cancer, potential signs. A nipple discharge, which is what I had. There's also have, you can also have a rash or you can have a dimpling in the nipple. It's, if you notice those simple, those signs, and you really should consider seeing your physician immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to go back and we're going to talk a little bit about 1% uh, in men. A lot of men don't feel as though they would have breast cancer, or we call it chest slash breast <laughs> cancer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the men. But we do know of several, one being uh, Matthew Knowles, he did come out and speak about it, and several others that are prominent that know about that. And 1% of men do get it. Yes. Yes, Richard Roundtree yes. was the first African-American male who I became acquainted with, right. with breast cancer years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, please understand that your mother or father does not have to have a line of breast cancer in your family. Many times it comes from ovarian cancer in a previous generation. Mm -hmm. um, there's a test called a BRCA gene test. There's BRCA1 and 2. And these BRCA tests come from gen, um, gene mutations known as BRCA1 and BRCA2. And there's testing for both men and women for this gene. And it produces uh, tumor suppression proteins. And the person could, is at risk of having breast cancer if they've been diagnosed with BRCA1 and 2. And insurance does pay for the testing. I'm glad you mentioned insurance. I've had so many women to speak to me about because I did a little, you know, a clip on asking about women and kind of talk to them about what are the things that really, why wouldn't you go get a mammogram or why haven't you been, you know, tested or something like that? Insurance is very huge. Some people yes. are uninsured and others are underinsured. And let's talk about how they can get that help. Well, you know, I think it's so critical that you mention that. Um, oftentimes, people who don't have insurance say, you know, I've got this nipple discharge, or I've got this lump, or I've got this yes. rash. I'm not sure what it is. I need to go get it check, te uh, checked out. If you're in the Houston area, the Rose is a good source for uninsured and underinsured women. Mm -hmm. However, please note, if you work part-time and don't have insurance, there's a fee that you'll have to pay. If you're uninsured and not working, you don't have to pay any any uh, fees for that. Mm -hmm. So that the rose is a good source. Now, in order to get to the rose, you have to have a referral, a physician's referral. If you don't have a primary physician and don't have insurance, then the main thing to do is to contact Dr. Sean Burton, B-U-R-T-O-N, at the Magnolia Family Medical Center. She's here in Houston and she charges a small fee to do only a breast exam and provide you with a referral to go to the rolls for the testing or for mammogram. If you have a positive diagnosis of breast cancer and the rolls or any other uh, location, Harris Health is another location, uh, get a gold card and go to Harris Health and let them do the testing as well. If you come up with a positive diagnosis, don't think that there's no way you can get funded for treatment of breast cancer, mm -hmm. there is, or even ovarian cancer. There's a federal program called the Breast and Cervical Services Program, Breast and Cervical Cancer Services Program. This program is a federally funded program that we fought for years ago, and it provides funding from diagnosis to treatment. Treatment includes chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, uh, reconstruction, uh, medication. It takes care of all of that. But many people, especially um, people in the community who are not insured or underinsured, don't even know about it. Right. And no one tells them about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. So, And that's why many die. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. That's why many die. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Right. So therefore, I'm not going to do a thing about it. Absolutely. Or they wait till closer to the end, the third and fourth stages. Uh, yes. Many of them do. The other thing, too, I've noticed, and I've talked to many of the ladies about this, is age. Many times age is, uh, as far as mammograms, they always say it seems 40 years old. But so many people being diagnosed, so, so as far as African-American women, I should say, earlier, in their 20s, in their 30s, yes. before their 40s. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. And what um, one of my board members, Lisa McMillan, I was diagnosed at the age of 26, and that wow. was 32 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she had to fight. She had to tell them, and this was 32 years ago. Think when the technology was not as great as it is now. Mm -hmm. And Lisa had to go, and she said, I felt in my spirit. Something kept saying, there's something not right mm -hmm. with me feeling that I've got breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm going to push it and push it. She did. And sure enough, she was diagnosed with breast cancer 32 years ago. Wow. And she was in her, tw she was 26. Yes. And her husband was playing professional football at the time for the Houston Oilers. So, you know, it, it's a shame that you have to fight, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, you have to. So that in the event that you feel in your spirit or people, so your gut, mm -hmm. that you, something's not right, then you have to fight for it. Go get another opinion, go pay your money to go somebody, to see somebody else, or, you know, talk to someone else. Mm -hmm. Because that way you'll know if you're feeling even if it's not breast cancer, even if it's fibrous cyst in your breast, people don't understand what fibrous cysts are. And it's just cysts in your breast that's filled with fluid. It cannot turn to breast cancer. So many people don't understand that women don't in particular and don't know. They automatically think it's breast cancer and it is not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of no matter what age you are, fight for what you believe. Absolutely. Many don't fight. They say, you know, either we can't do it right now, we're not going to do it now, or and then we just take that and accept it as, hey, they can't find it, it's, it's okay. And they decide to wait. Yes. And that's why particularly African-American women are diagnosed at such a late stage, stage three, stages four, yes. or they may have what's called, um, you know, get to the point where if it's stage four, then that means they're metastatic, that the cancers slipped into the lymph nodes and have traveled to other organs in the body, yes. brain, lungs, liver, bones, so that it takes more, um, no more ways to find um, ways to solve it, other types of treatment or therapies to fix that cancer or to get rid of the cancer. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of prayer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Much prayer, much power. Exactly. So many women also feel as though and we're talking about the femininity that they lose. If they the first thing they say is I'm going to have to lose my breast or I'm going to have to, you know, part of it. I won't feel as feminine anymore. Right. Um, and we address that in our support group sessions. Um, I felt, and that's why we included uh, in our curriculum, we have a curriculum, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. with 30 sessions in it. And we talk, we don't talk about specifically breast reconstruction, but breast reconstruction is an option. Mm -hmm. And there are many types of breast reconstruction. I was so, so blessed to have breast reconstruction at the time that I did, because it was just new on the, on the block, on the scene, mm -hmm. and brand new in 96. And they did what's called a free tram flap. And that means that they took my abdominal fat, which I had a little bit of that there, <laughs> enough to, to reconstruct one breast mm -hmm. and the muscle. Mm -hmm. And now they don't take as much muscle as they did back then. So they do what's called a deep flap now. But the rest, the breast reconstruction is so simple. They did not do nipple sparing back then. And now they do. Where even if you have a mastectomy, you can spare the nipple and it looks just like the regular breast. My nipple and my breast looks just like the one on the right side, which was not touched. Mm -hmm. Because back then they did not remove an undiagnosed uh, cancer in a breast that didn't have uh, breast cancer. So now they, if a person or a woman decides, okay, I want both of them gone, 
-hmm. Having a mastectomy reduces the um, the chances of the reoccurrence of breast cancer. Now, does it mean that you won't get it? It doesn't mean that. It means that the, the chances of it or likelihood are reduced significantly versus if you have just a lumpectomy. Mm -hmm. Lumpectomy means all you do is remove the lump and you keep going. Mm -hmm. You may have to have radiation. You may have to have chemotherapy with the lumpectomy, but the chances of reoccurrence are higher with lumpectomy than with mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So encapsulated, if you encapsulate it and you remove the whole thing. Encapsulation is something different. Encapsulation means when you, if you have what's called an, a breast implant, mm -hmm. that's one of the types of um, breast reconstruction. And it, it, it encapsulates means that it becomes hard like a brick. Mm. And that means that the implant, something's gone wrong with the implant. You have to have it removed. My good friend, and I don't know if she wants me to mention her name. Her first name is Yolanda. Her, her implant encapsulated. Mm -hmm. And I prayed about it. I said, Yolanda, I've got a, an outstanding reconstructive surgeon. He is phenomenal. Uh, Jay Shinak. Mm -hmm. I think you need to go get a second opinion. Oh, I've had this done two times. I'm going to go back to the same person. Three times you're striking out. Mm -hmm. No. Let's go get a second opinion. I'll go with you. And Dr. Shinak said, I think we need to replace the um, type of um, implant you have mm -hmm. and let's look at using this type versus the one that you've got and she's had no problems and it's been at least three to four years since that encapsulation happened for her mm -hmm. so encapsulation means something is not right with that implant mm -hmm. or your implants can sometimes leak so again it's always good to check it out once you have like i still go for mammograms if you have a a, a, a bilateral mastectomy then you want to go back and have ultrasounds done mm -hmm. because they cannot really do a mammogram on the breast reconstruction that you've had. I get a mammogram done on the right breast that was not operated on or I received a mastectomy on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other you put down, you have surgical options and we get a, we went over a few of those. Uh, several women, I, I, we were talking with uh, uh, Janice on Monday. And we were talking, uh -huh. yeah, we were talking a little bit about reconstruction. A lady sent in that she was so excited that she had both of her breasts removed. She was able to go up two sizes higher than she was before. Wow. <laughs> Woo -hoo. And she was so excited about it. It was the best thing wow. that has happened to her because at that time she just didn't have a lot of breasts. And now she's able to wear the clothes, <laughs> dresses and things that she wanted to wear. So she was excited about it, and she wanted all women to know that femininity uh, is in you, in you, the person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always tell patients, uh, you know, who are trying to face that decision, the decision is ultimately yours, not the plastic surgeons mm -hmm. and not the surgeon who's operating on you. Uh, I always try to remind them we've got outstanding surgeons but you wanna make sure that the surgeon who's gonna do your mastectomy or lumpectomy is not just only certified to be a, in a general, sur is a general surgeon certified with diseases of the breast. You wanna make sure that someone has studied oncology, that they've studied cancer, that they've done either a fellowship in oncology somewhere and knows how to handle uh, patients who've been diagnosed with cancer. And that's so important as well. Um, and having breast reconstruction, your options are very, you've got a wide, wide range of options. Mm -hmm. You've got the flap, the deep flap, and the what's called a uh, regular flap, which they pull the abdominal muscle up through the chest wall and cavity to reconstruct a new breast. Uh, and you've got the option of, diff, of, um, of implants. So that's an option as well. And if you have implants already, you all still want to make sure that you have mammograms done to make sure that there's nothing wrong. If you don't have cancer, if you got breast implants to enhance what God gave you, <laughs> then you want to make sure that you have mammograms done to make sure that there is no cancer lurking behind those implants. Absolutely. Let's do this. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with Dr. Bennett. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages.
Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. For a limited time, get $16,000 off all in-stock Cadillac 2019 XT5 crossovers and $19,000 off all in-stock 2019 CT6 sedans. Or experience the first ever 2020 Cadillac XT6 premium luxury collection. Only $519 with $1 down for 39 months lease. Or purchase and receive 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. Drive the new 2020 Cadillac XT4, only $399 a month, or the new 2020 XT5, only $429 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase the XT4 or XT5 and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881. 881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thank you so much for coming back, Dr. Bennett. We were just talking about and doing the end of reconstruction of the breast, and we were talking about uh Enhancing the breast a little bit. <laughs> Enhancement of the breast. <laughs> and we were also discussing just the ways that women can, uh, after the breast is removed. One of the other things is chemotherapy. Everybody, the first thing every woman thinks of is that my hair is going to fall out. Yes. Um, all chemotherapy drugs and technologies do not uh, cause hair to fall out. Mm -hmm. It depends on the level of our stage of the breast cancer, as well as a type of uh, chemotherapy drug. There's so many drugs. I do research, uh, I, let me put it this way. I review uh, research proposals for the Department of Defense, which is a federal um, agency through the federal government, Department of Defense, that's like Army. And um, we review, I review proposals, I've been doing it for four years. And to see how the technologies for chemotherapies have changed over those that four years of just serving to review to review research proposals has been phenomenal phenomenal so all chemotherapy drugs do not remove the hair if the hair is lost then there are different things that you can do you can go bald i've met women who walk around bald with no hair at all mm -hmm. you can wear a scarf you can get a wig we are connected to another uh, nonprofit that has free wigs for women who um, are diagnosed, who've been diagnosed with breast cancer. So, or you can do something with hair replacement. If your hair does not come back completely, we've got another connection with another breast cancer organ, with not, excuse me, another nonprofit that can help you with replacing spots in your hair and your scalp or what have you that have not come all the way back after you're done with chemotherapy. Uh, radiation is another form of treatment. And many times we don't know that what to do about the skin because radiation may tend to uh, burn the skin. So what is important to remember is that the radiation stays in your blood, in your system for six months after your last radiation treatment. So there are lots of things that we need to educate ourselves on. And the internet is not always the <laughs> best way to get information. I totally agree with that. Uh, we'll Google and say, oh, my God, I am, you know, I'm sneezing, I'm coughing. You, then something yes. pops up, you got COVID. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And let me mention this, too. Um, one of the things that I think is really important, another th therapy that's often used for treatment of breast cancer after a woman's been diagnosed 
and if she's estrogen positive, what they'll do, what the physicians will do is prescribe an estrogen suppressor, mm. tamoxifen or arimidex to suppress the estrogen in their bodies. And that means that they've been diagnosed with either HER2 positive or HER2 negative. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that, that means that they're suppressing your estrogen. And that's important because the more estrogen your body produces, if you're HER2 positive or negative, the more likely for the breast cancer to return. So that's why you have to be on this regimen. One of the things that I think is so important, I, I did before I was diagnosed, and I've done, continue to do even now, is to exercise and eat healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, putting down the fast foods <laughs> was so easy for me to do that um, it, it, I don't miss it. Mm -hmm. Putting down caffeine sodas, uh, putting down caffeinated coffee, uh, because if you drink cat or eat chocolate, now I do eat chocolate, but within moderation, <laughs> I can't put that down totally. Um, <laughs> But it, it can form, the caffeine can form fiber cysts in your breast and make you think, uh oh, there's a lump. I've got breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So, e eating healthy and uh, exercise, we cover those in our curriculum about eating healthy and exercise. We also cover in our curriculum forgiveness. Mm -hmm. mm. I cannot tell you, not just with breast cancer, forgiving those people and situations who, where you've been hurt. Right is so monumental in the mm -hmm. life of a person who's been diagnosed with any type of cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and forgiving those persons and you say, oh, I forgave them. If you think deep down, mm -hmm. you have not. Yeah. So I always tell people to write a letter to yourself or the person you need to forgive. Mm -hmm. Let them off the hook because it is not for them, it is for you. Yes. So we cover forgiveness in our curriculum we also cover um, it's okay to cry. We uh, talk about relationships. My relationship with God before I was diagnosed was, he's my sugar daddy. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Mm -hmm. Lord, I need blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And now it has changed such that I began to praise him for doing what he said he was gonna, he was gonna do for me in my life. Mm -hmm. The other thing you also talk about mental health, suicide depression. Oh my Things God. Like yes. Yes. We had one uh, breast cancer survivor who came to us and I knew something was not right mm -hmm. with her. And the second session, she came to our support group. She said, I must tell you, the first session really helped me because I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. I was willing to drive my car off the freeway and kill myself because I had no one to support me. Uh, starting my journey of breast cancer mm -hmm. and I thought oh my goodness so mental health issues are addressed in our curriculum through the things or challenges that women face during the session mm -hmm. it is so so critical to get that help through a support group or through some church group that is addressing the challenges of going through cancer diagnosis so so important mm -hmm. And you also talk about the fact within your support group of how to tell family members and what to say. Exactly, we do. And they are also invited, family members, friends, mm -hmm. neighbors um, are invited, your support system, right. caregivers are invited to attend the support group as well. It's not just for those who are diagnosed with cancer. And if you're diagnosed, you can come at any stage of diagnosis. If you're in treatment right now, you can say, it's too late. I can't go. Yes, you can. Yes. If you're finished with treatment or almost finished with treatment, yes, you can. The door is always open, always open mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to anyone at okay. any stage. We also provide, Cam, financial assistance to the women who attend our support groups. Mm. Um, we have provided, uh, paid for mortgages, uh, at least one month of mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. We've paid rent. We've taken care of, um, I'm trying to think, we've done so much. Yeah. Rent, pay, pay, pay car notes. We had one homeless person sleeping on the streets of Houston who refused to go into treatment again. She was stage four. Wow. She refused treatment. She refused. She said, if I go into treatment again, then I have to come back and sleep on the streets with animals and are in clement weather. Yes. She said, I cannot go to treatment. If I'm sick, I can't go and come back and sleep out in the streets. Right. So we put her in an extended stay. She went back to treatment. The cancer was more than metastatic, it was everywhere. Wow. And she did not make it. Wow. But at least we did what we could to help her. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And let me say this, um, a lot of what we do is through the donations we receive and the events that we have, mm -hmm. uh, as well as through uh, Kava Health, K-A-V-A Health. They provide our rental space so that we have office space to do the kinds of things that we're able to do. And I'm so appreciate, appreciative of Kava Health because that allows our funding to go to help the women we serve diagnosed with breast cancer. Absolutely. You've done so much, uh, Dr. Bennett, over these 24 years, my God, just even before your nonprofit, you were doing things for women that were, yes. uh, you know, had breast cancer. They would come talk to you yes. all of these times and things like that. In doing so, why so? Why was that? You know, Cam, all I can say is that God had a plan for my life, and I'm so eternally grateful to him because women would find me through other people who mm -hmm. talked about me, through um, other doctors who say, you know, I know of Dr. Jenny Bennett. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. You might want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And they would give them my information. I'd get phone calls out of the blue. <laughs> and you know, and this was before the nonprofits got started. Mm -hmm. And I would do all that I could to share with them, you know, this is what breast cancer will do for you. Mm -hmm. Here's some resources for you. Um, and I would also at the time, back then, I don't do it now, would share with them um, what a reconstructed breast would look like. Mm -hmm. Because some of them were facing a mastectomy, complete mastectomy, mm -hmm. and were afraid of having it done. And I said, well, you know, you can have this option of having a um, breast reconstructed, mm -hmm. your breast reconstructed. So therefore, don't be afraid. My reconstructed breast looks exactly like the breast that was not did not have any cancer in it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I had a perfectionist for a breast surgeon. <laughs> and so if people say, oh, I want to go to MD Anderson, I can't get in, let me know contact me. Mm -hmm. I'll do what I can to get you in because I have those inroads and I've got several board members who work at MD Anderson. I'm so eternally grateful to my board. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for my volunteers. Uh, we've got facilitators who are trained to conduct the support groups. Mm -hmm. Many of them have gone through breast cancer themselves. Uh, I've got one who's a retired nurse uh, out in Texas City who does a phenomenal job. She did not have breast cancer, but she's good about talking to pre people who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Each and everyone's journey is so different. No journey is identical to someone else's. It's called individualized journey. Mm -hmm. What I love about you all, all the time, Dr. Bennett, I've known you for a while, and you know we've done different, uh, you've come on the show a few times to talk about breast yes. cancer, your uh, advocacy to women, as well as men, just about yes. breast cancer. You've sat on, a, a, you've sat on research side for four years yes. just to make sure yes. that you're on top of it and that you can spread the word to others. Why so, yes. why so sit on uh, this research above everything else well, you do? And, <laughs> well, and then too, let me say this to you. And it's so important to sit on that committee. I sat on research research committees for MD Anderson and, the re, and participated in research studies. Mm -hmm. The reason why I participated in two research studies when I was going through treatment at MD Anderson, number one, it saved my life. Yes. Number two, African-American women do not want to participate in research. Right. Why? Because they think about Tuskegee yes. experiment. Yes. And they think about uh, I don't want to be a guinea pig. Yes. No, that's not it. Or they think about, well, you know, my mother, you all, I used to hear my grandmother say, or my parents say, once you get cut open with cancer, it goes everywhere and you die. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. So participating in research can save your life, if not your life, the life of the person who comes after you, who's going to be diagnosed with breast cancer. Remember, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah. and more African-American women die from it. So it's also so very critical that if there's a study of some sort that you get in that study, you participate in it, and then you are become not a guinea pig, but a number to help someone else. I love that. We need that data. We, we need that data. We do. And I'm glad you're saying yes, that and you're telling other women that when they see that, because there's so many studies out there, but they need participation, yes. especially from us 
as African American because they don't have it. There, there's a there's a um, a web website called clinicaltrials.org, and it lets you know the clinical trials in your area that are available. Oftentimes, in fact, I've never had to pay for any any medications or anything when I participated in a clinical trial. It was all free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So know that that's available. Um, I was talking to a, a, a veteran the other day who was diagnosed with a second round, a, a second type of, excuse me, a second diagnosis of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't know how I'm going to afford my medication. I said, here's what you do. Get in the BCCS program and or, she said, no, I've got insurance. I said, well, then contact the pharmaceutical company and ask them to help you pay for that because it can be expensive. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, what we're going to do, they want to they wanna show, you have an upcoming event. Let's show that flyer and let's talk about that upcoming event. Sure. There you go. That's this is our fifth, event. Annual, our fifth annual golf tournament uh, for reconstruction of a survivor. It's going to be October the 9th, which is a Friday, Friday morning at Quail Valley Golf Course out in Missouri City. Uh, we're going to practice social distancing. Uh, we're going to do temperature checks. We'll have masks available if someone comes without a mask. All the event will be done outside. Uh, they have a beautiful patio where we'll have um, the lunch. Uh, Black Wall in the Cafe on Memorial Drive is providing the breakfast outside for us. We'll have lunch outside provided by Quail Valley. Uh, and the proceeds go back to help reconstruction of a survivor. Like I said, we don't pay rent. We don't have salaries. Uh, the money needs to go back to help the women diagnosed with breast cancer. The other thing is that we've got wonderful, wonderful auction items. Uh, I can't go through all of them. We will have raffle items if you signed up as a golfer or if you want to come and um, get your name in a, uh, one of the raffle raffle items, then we'll welcome, you're welcome to have uh, participate in that. But please come out. We've got tons of volunteers. Uh, I appreciate them so very much because they are giving their time their service, their love, and um, just being used by God to help other women. Absolutely. I love that. So it's October the 9th. It's Friday? Yes. Next Friday. Fri next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Good. Good, good. Next Friday. That's good. That's good. What else do we have? Uh, right now, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. as, as I said, all of our support group sessions are on Zoom. If you know someone who's been diagnosed with breast cancer and you feel that they may need some help or if it's you yourself, be sure that you go to our website at www.roasurvivor.org. If you look on the right-hand side of the panel, uh, it'll show you, uh, it says contact us if you're interested in participating in one of the support groups and I can find out which support group would best fit your needs. We have got various support groups all over so that when we go back live again, face to face, um, I'm hopefully can get you into one that's going to be close to where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not discriminate. We've got women from all cultural backgrounds, uh, African-American, white, Jewish. Um, we've had a Muslim to participate. We've got women from all socioeconomic levels as well as from all um, what else? I'm missing something. Social and economic backgrounds, cultural and, um, well, anyway, we take anybody. <laughs> we that. take anybody. I love it. You take anybody. All are welcome to come. All yes. are welcome to come. We love that. Yes. We love the fact that you yes. are, have dedicated your life uh, with just the information also, because everything changes every year. It changes on a consistent basis. But I love the fact that you tell women way before 40, if something is wrong, go. Yes. Remember, if you know, you know your body more than anyone else in the world, mm -hmm. more than your doctor knows your body, mm -hmm. please fight for what you believe is going wrong with your body. And it doesn't have to be breast cancer. Um, I had open heart surgery several years ago, mm -hmm. and um, the surgery caused my kidneys to take a vacation. And I believe that they would come back from vacation because that's what God told me. Mm -hmm. Well, they did for three months. And I was on dialysis for three months and off two and a half years. 
and I'm back on dialysis now doing all of the work that I'm doing right now. But I truly believe that, and, and research has changed so much, not just with that, uh, with breast cancer, but with all kinds of uh, areas of, medica- of medicine. Mm-hmm. For instance, with, with the kidneys troubles, issues that I'm having or challenges, as I call them, my, the people say your kidneys are not working. Yes, they are. They're working in heaven, but we can manifest that here on earth. <laughs> and I always say that um, they are working. And the research has changed because I don't have to have a match for a kidney, whereas in the past, you have to have somebody to donate for you to be a match. And that is not the case anymore. So the research changes, not just with cancer and all forms of cancer, but also other types of uh, medical issues and challenges that people face. Okay, we're going to stop right there. And we want to talk more about Dr. Ben, talk to her a little bit more, breast cancer, as well as other health conditions. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. Drive the new 2020 Cadillac XT4, only $399 a month, or the new 2020 XT5, only $429 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase the XT4 or XT5 and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281 281- 881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. For a limited time, get $16,000 off all in-stock Cadillac 2019 XT5 crossovers and $19,000 off all in-stock 2019 CT6 sedans. Or experience the first ever 2020 Cadillac XT6 premium luxury collection. Only $519 with $1 down for 39 months lease. Or purchase and receive 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com and now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thanks so much for coming back. We were talking to Dr. Bennett a little bit. Dr. Bennett, we were talking to you a little bit about your journey on with your kidneys. Yes. Um, and I truly believe that God has a plan for me to continue on the work that I'm doing for women diagnosed with breast cancer but there may be something else he wants me to do. I do speak to the medical students at the um, McGovern Medical School in the medical center at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I was scheduled to speak again in April about my journey with breast cancer and with um, kidneys to let the over 200 potential physicians know, you've got to listen to your patients. Yes. If you don't understand the African-American community, because I'm African-American, then you need to get to know our community Mm -hmm. because we have different thoughts. We have a lot of myths in our head or we have some facts that may not be actual facts, but we want to help dispel a lot of that. Um, So it's important for you to know your family history. I can always remember my mother always saying, whatever goes on in this house stays in this house. Mm -hmm. Yes. No one in my family on her side had any type of cancer. My father's sister had breast cancer. No one talked about it. We knew about it because she had a lymphedema in her arm. Her arm had uh, a edema or swelling, but no one talked about it. Mm-hmm. And no one talked about the fact that no one in my family, there were no kidney issues in my family, but we had hypertension. Mm-hmm. And that didn't cause my kidneys to go south, but it can. Persons who are diabetic, who have hypertension, need to be careful. Follow what your doctor says. Follow the diets. Eat healthy, exercise, especially exercise. 
I've been exercising now for 25 years and I love it. When I can't, I am miserable and I'm grouchy. <laughs> you don't want to get grouchy. <laughs> you want to be around me when I have an exercise. So those are important things. Even if, um, even being on dialysis, I still exercise and take, make the time to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also want to say, Cam, that I want to thank the facilities who allow us to have the support groups. We are at four of the Houston Methodist hospitals. We're at the VA hospital. We're also at Good Hope Baptist Church. We are at UTMB medical, uh, excuse me, UTMB um, facility in League City. We're at Texas City Community Center. We've got trained facilitators there. We are also at um, HCA, uh, the Women's Hospital and the Medical Center. We've got a location, HCA Pearland. And I'm always forgetting somebody, I always do. But uh, that's enough. I think those are, those are the, main, uh, the main locations for us. That sounds great. That sounds good. I love the fact, like you said, that you have support groups because so many things happen. Once a person does hear the word cancer, no matter what it is, just cancer, we in our community many times think death. I thought death. And every cancer patient I've talked to, regardless if it's breast cancer or not, they always think I'm going to die. Yes. In particular, the breast cancer patients, because there's so there's so there's 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 so lack of there's such a lack of knowledge in our community, right. in many communities, not just African American, but in many communities about the resources, the te the technologies or treatments for that disease. Mm -hmm. It's so prevalent out there in terms of lack of knowledge and lack of information. It's important to educate yourself, but educate yourself the right way. And it's also very good to get the support. Many of our people in the many of the people in our support groups have gone through cancer. They know are in the journey of cancer. We had one gentleman I'll tell this funny story real quick. His wife, he would come every single um, month. We meet once a month mm -hmm. with his wife who had breast cancer. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for him in terms of support for prostate cancer. And he told us one night, he said, I have learned more about cancer <laughs> and, and learned about how to go through the journey of cancer than I did when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So it was helpful to him just to be in the presence of others who are going through the journey of, uh, of cancer. Absolutely. There's one lady that sent in a note just letting people know a lot of uh, older women uh, she's older in her 70s, and she chose not to have, she had both breasts removed, but she so, chose prosthesis, she said. Yes. So, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think is a good option for women. Uh, I know several who have decided to go that route. The prosthesis uh, are, the technology is changing regarding prosthetics, mm -hmm. so that with the prosthetic, a woman can find them as being lighter, because many times they're heavy. Mm -hmm. because people want them to emulate what the feeling of a natural breast is. Yes. But now they're making them now because of the, the uh, advancement in technology, such that they're lighter and not as heavy to wear uh, during the course of a day. Right, right. So she was just letting people, letting <laughs> her, her, older, her older sisters, she said, her older sisters to let them know that, uh, you know, because they're older, they said too much surgery is too much. So they don't want to <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm glad she sent that note in because it reminds me of one lady that I was able to help um, when she was diagnosed. I went in with, met her at, at MD Anderson mm -hmm. to uh, for her surgery to meet with her surgeon and meet with the plastic surgeon, and her husband was with her. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because this is an older white woman in her 70s at the time, mm -hmm. and she said um, she met with a plastic surgeon. She said, "Well, what are my options?" And he gave her the options, and she said, "Oh." You mean I can have two new perky boobs? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, my husband. He said, honey, you're going to love this. And she looked at him and he said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, having new two new perky boobs are none at all. It's up to you to feel good about yourself mm -hmm. and to get the support from others, to know that you were, are here to be able to uh, bless somebody else with the journey that you've gone through. Absolutely. I and that's do why I'm still here do want to reiterate from the men's side, uh, as a guy, ladies, we want you here. So whichever way you can stay here, we want you here. <laughs> yeah. And we did have one male, um, out at our location at Houston Methodist, uh, in Sugarland. His wife had lung cancer 
he had the breast cancer mm -hmm. and he would come to uh, the support group uh, because he had breast cancer and she would come with him. And he was not ashamed to be in a group of all women mm -hmm. because a lot of the things we address in our support groups not only affect the men, but they also, excuse me, affect the women, but they're also important to the men as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the therapies that they give the men for treatment of breast cancer are the exact same drugs that they give the women. Mm. Nothing different. Mm. Nothing different. Wow. Because wow. it's hormonal. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's hormonal. Yes, 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 yes. Let's reiterate again about underinsured and under under and uninsured women what process going to the roles is. Right, yes, please, please, please. If you have not had a mammogram, I met a lady, I was speaking at a, uh, a rehabilitation center uh, funded by the Salvation Army mm -hmm. one night and I gave away door prizes for people to get a free mammogram that I uh, had a grant that would pay for them to go get a free mammogram. Mm -hmm. And they had to have a referral to go to the roles for the free mammogram. So I had a raffle. And one lady was in her 60s, had never had a mammogram mm. in her 60s. Mm -hmm. She won the raffle. And I said, here, it only cost $25 at the time. This was back in the uh, early 2000, uh, excuse me, 2010, exactly. And I said, it only cost $25 to go see Dr. Sean Burton. Let her do a breast exam. And that's all she would do. She'll write a referral for you to go to the roles. If you're uninsured, which she didn't have insurance, mm -hmm. and if you're underinsured, that means that you have insurance, but it's not going to cover enough right. of anything. Absolutely. And even with the affordable health care, sometimes you have such a high deductible or you have to pay such a high copay to go in to see a doctor. The roles is a good option for you. Absolutely. And once you're diagnosed, mm -hmm. if you have a positive diagnosis, then the BCCS service, which is a breast and cervical cancer services program, is there for you to help take care of your treatment. Right. And Let's... we've got on our website, I'm sorry, Cam, excuse me for interrupting. On our website, we have a whole list of resources for women, uh, their financial resources, health resources, clinical trial resources. It's there on our website under the tab resources. That's great. Also, let's tell women that do have insurance to go to the roles because that's how it's funded for other women. Exactly. Their insurance helps to fund uh, other women who are uninsured and underinsured. If you don't have insurance and you work part time, remember, you will have to pay on a sliding scale. I don't want you to be shocked to say it's going to be free because I don't have insurance. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please mm -hmm. know that if you work part time or full time and don't have insurance, you will have to pay a fee. Yes, yes. We want to be able to tell that about the roles and things like that. And also, we want to make sure with your website, let's go back to the website again. The website uh, address is www.roasurvivor.org. And it's not too late to sign up to play in the golf tournament. Or if you want to come out and, and bid on some of the auction items, we have wonderful auction items. We've got one night stay at Casa del Mar in Galveston, which is a, a seafront, uh, ocean, well not ocean front, but Galveston Bayfront uh, facility. And I stayed there before and it is wonderful, 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 wonderful. That's enormous. Uh, let's uh, give it that date Norma again. Garza, um, the, the date of the golf tournament is Friday, next Friday, Yes. October the 9th. That's perfect. That's perfect. How do people get in touch with you? Uh, the website well, again, is that on the website? It's on the website, mm -hmm. but also my email address is dr, dr, D like a doctor, dr, J Bennett, B like a boy, E N N E T T at R O A survivor.org. We also have an Instagram page and we also have a uh, Facebook page. And all that information is on our website. Perfect. What would you like to leave with the viewers? Don't let the fact that you may have funds or do not have funds stop you from being treated for breast cancer or someone that you might know or love. Know that it's all treatable. There's always hope. People come to us hopeless, but they leave 
from Lee from being going attending our support groups with a ton of hope, knowing that they can live and you can live beyond the diagnosis of breast cancer. That's beautiful. I thank you, lady, for everything, all that you do, thank Dr. You. Bennett. Thank I you. so appreciate you for all the years you have done everything for all women, thousands and thousands of women. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of going through research and just taking your time. God bless you. And I thank God uh, for you allowing me to come on the show. And I'm so eternally grateful to him for the favor he's given our organization mm -hmm. because we operate our budget on a shoestring. But we need more than a shoestring to help the, the numbers that are going to increase. Even though during this pandemic state, um, people are given to anything that says COVID on it. Yes. But we still have women diagnosed during this COVID uh, pandemic time. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. God bless you and much Thank love you. to you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. See you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, guys, on tomorrow, we have Sherry Shepard, and you have got to come back and see her. 1230 to 130 Central Standard Time. You will laugh the whole time. Be blessed. Bye.